Hey, this is Gabby, and I'm making a platformer party game about pushing other players into lava. Oh my god! Uh oh. What the heck? What is going on? <laughs> Nine months ago, I announced the game and created a video explaining everything about it. But over the last few months, I've been on the journey of converting this game into multiplayer, and actually preparing to release it on Steam. So in this devlog, I plan to show you everything I've done since the last video about it. So this is where I've been sat working over the past few months. These are many of the characters you can play in the game, and these are all the maps that I've made so far. But as I said, I'm making this game multiplayer, so I basically need to start from scratch. So the first few months of development, I actually explored different networking solutions. I jumped from Photon, Facepunch, Unet, to even writing my own multiplayer code. But in the end, I decided to use Steam's online networking system to handle lobbies and connections, and use Mirror inside of Unity to help me handle some in-game features. I spent the first month developing a system for hosting games, joining lobbies, and all of the backend programming that needed to be complete. This took a while because I spent a lot of time optimizing all of my code and implementing precautions, like what happens when someone gets kicked or disconnected. But to quickly run down what I made, I created a lobby creation screen, where you can change the lobby name, whether it's private or public, and I'll also probably make it so you can choose how large your lobby is. The lobbies themselves are fairly simple, they just display all the players, including their names and Steam profile pictures. I gain access to this data directly through Steam, which means players don't have to set up profiles inside of the game. Initially, I was going to have this profile set up, as you can see on the screen right now, but I ended up just grabbing all of that data from Steam directly, as it makes it much more easier for me. I also made it so that the level selection is inside of the lobby. The majority of online games will have you select the map prior to creating the lobby, but I personally don't like this, because I don't want players to have to close the lobby before selecting a new map, as that kind of sounds annoying in my opinion. So I spent a bit of time making this lobby selector sync across the network, so that it updates in real time. I personally think it makes it more interactive, and as for the process of doing this, I basically just send a packet containing the ID and the name of the map. Then based on the ID, the correct icon gets chosen. And if you don't know what packets are, think of it as a package that holds some information that is sent from one person to another. This package can then be opened up, and its data can be used in whatever way you please. In this case, it's updating the map icon and name. I also featured the character customizations in the lobby, and this one is only client-sided, which means you're the only one who can see what character you currently have selected. In one of my earlier prototypes, I made it so that all the character selection gets synced across, but it became quite a bit of a mess because players would constantly flick through the different characters, and sending all of that data over can be quite straining on the connection. So currently, all this does is actually loop through an array of colours and skins, if you don't know what an array is, it's basically just a large group of things that we can easily loop through. And the nice thing is that it's modular, meaning that I can easily add new skins and colours to it. In the future though, I want to make an actual shop system with progression and achievements, because I personally think it'll be a little bit nicer than just a flip screen. Finally, I made the main menu display all the public open lobbies, so that anyone can still play the game even if their friends aren't on. Now luckily, all the logic for displaying these lobbies is directly grabbed from Steam. Steam has a bunch of good, useful functions that you can use for accessing data about lobbies. In this case, I just access all the lobbies that are currently public and open. That about wraps all of the backend programming for now, so let's move on to the actual game. The first game mechanic I implemented was player movement. The players in my game have multiple different mechanics, so I will go over them one by one. Starting with the basic player movement, this is just moving left to right. I could basically just copy all of this code from the previous project, but needed to make sure that I send the data about the player's X, Y, and Z position. I then added a jumping, which had a similar method of implementing, just copy and paste, and change a line or two. Dashing was next, and honestly, it's just horizontal jumping, so once again, copy and paste. Then I needed to add the harder movement mechanics, such as wall jumping. You see, players in this game can jump and slide on walls, and syncing this across was a bit annoying, and didn't always look right. The final mechanic was punching. Now, the actual punching implementation was fine, and I did it quite quickly. But implementing the knockback from it was just a pain. You see, the player who gets punched needs to apply the knockback to themselves, as this makes them more stable on an online game. 
The only issue is that the knockback strength and direction gets calculated on the actual hitter, so the player who performed the punch, which meant I needed to come up with a quick solution of sending that data over. Now since there's two pieces of data that we need, we technically need to send two packets, but this can sometimes be quite slow, which is not ideal. It also doesn't make sense to send two packets if the data is so small. So instead I grouped both of these values into one, and then send it over as one packet. I then reorder this data into separate values and we have everything we need. So all the player mechanics are complete. I then got the lava working so it moves from the bottom to the top of the screen. And once again I'm just syncing the position over the server. The two other main things I needed to do in terms of game mechanics are items and obstacles, and secondly all of the different game phases. I decided to work on game phases as those seemed more important. Now what I mean by game phases is what happens at the start of the game, in the middle of the game, and at the end of the game. With my game this is quite simple, at the start we just want a countdown timer that goes from 3 to 0. I managed to make a quite nice system for this and it's also synced across the server which is nice. I also needed to make it so that players can't move the character once this phase is active, which was also very simple to do. Then we have the game phase itself, which basically means movement is now unlocked, players can move around. We'll also have things like crates and obstacles spawning in here, but I'll talk about those in a future video once they're fully finished. And finally we had the third phase, which is the end of the game. For this, there is technically only two things that can happen. The first one is some player wins, and the second one is that the game is just drawn. So I made a system that basically determines what player is last left alive, and then it will display that they won, if that is the case. And if nobody is alive, then it will just say the game is tied. I then moved on to making a bunch of UI and design changes. At the start of making this game, I needed to create a main menu scene. And to be perfectly honest, I'm really bad at making decisions. So I spent multiple hours just playing around with different looks to see and find what looked best. I ended up going back and forth to it, but was unable to choose which design I liked better. But I was able to use a website called Helpful, who are kindly sponsoring this video, that helped me choose the right style and design for my main menu. Helpful allows literally anybody, big or small, to get quick and direct feedback for any questions they may have. The questions can literally be anything from what name looks best to which character design is nicer. You can get quick and real feedback, yes, real feedback from actual humans to help you choose the right thing. Needless to say, as a game developer, there are a lot of choices that you need to make, and sometimes you just aren't exactly sure whether you're making the right decision, which is why Helpful would be a great tool to use in your game dev journey. As for the process of asking these questions, it's super simple. Just follow the instructions on Helpful, set your demographic, and receive detailed results. You can click the link in the description below to start using Helpful today. Thank you for sponsoring this video, and genuinely guys, this is an awesome tool, and I'm promoting it because I really think it can help a lot of you guys out there. In the end, I chose the simple main menu design. I'm planning on maybe adding some characters to the sides of the screen to make it more appealing, because that's what I've been suggested to do, but for now, this will do. So this is the end of the devlog. I'm planning on making more, which should come out in the upcoming months, and the game will be released on Steam for free, by the way, sometime this year. I say sometime as I want to make sure the game is actually good and not horrible and unplayable. Plus there's a bunch of cool things I want to add before release. But if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like and subscribe. And also please wishlist push me if you can. Thank you to all of my Patreons and I will see you guys later. Bye!